Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, I'm Florio Dalla Vedova, LX2 uh, Delta Victor from uh, Luxembourg. And in fact, I'm also uh, on duty, still uh, living in, uh, in Luxembourg, for, as, uh, in charge as uh, president of AMSAT Italia. And the member of, uh, of our board decided that uh, thanks to Skype and TeamSpeak, I could continue to do my job uh, remotely. Uh, today I'm proud to present you and to invite you to collaborate in our AstroSat SkyWave uh, program that um, is in fact um, ide that was ideated and promoted by AMSAT Italia and the Italian um, um, amateur astro astronomy amateur uh, union Unione Astro uh, Astrofili Italiani just to set a little bit the number we are about 100 here, of which five to 10 are very active. Uh, we are radio frequency engineers and aerospace engineers. And there are about uh, 80,000 people uh, headed by the most uh, in, uh, known uh, Italian scientists in Italy. <coughs> so what is AstroSat SkyWave? It's in fact, it's our program. It's uh, AstroSat SkyWave is made by and for amateurs. Here it is important that we are trying to collect and to, uh, to make approach uh, various uh, types of amateurs, astronomers on one side and radio amateurs, because as uh, Hans recalled it's, uh, in his presentation some time ago, radio amateurs very often are doing only their business individually and they are not so quite aware of the nice things that can be done also in other sectors. So here we are trying to uh, combine uh, radio amateurs and uh, amateur uh, of astronomy. The SkyWave part of the program was ideated in AMSAT Italia in October 2000. And uh, it, was, it was in fact uh, a will to incorporate, in addition to normal classical radio amateur uh, telecommunication traffic, to include also scientific interest, especially here in astronomy and HFDX thanks to the study of space weather. AstroSat SkyWave obviously serves and potentiates our interest as radio and amateurs, and obviously it has to be done with AM spirit. So just, you will have to be faced to several names, so just to make it clear at the beginning, here is the basic level, uh, the first level of the product tree of the program. AstroSat SkyWave is made of a ground segment and of which, which is organized uh, around uh, a central uh, uh, website called Ionosfera. Then it has a first satellite called AstroSat that is primarily the optical one. It, it, will, it will embark a telescope for astronomy. And uh, the second payload is obviously AMP transceiver that has to be t uh, defined. Then you have the second satellite that is SkyWave and he will be devoted to radio frequency uh, investigations thanks to uh, our radio amateur top side sounder as primary payload, uh, scientific payload, but also carrying, obviously, a radio amateur transceiver. So the content of this presentation is, uh, as we are talking for SkyWave part um, uh, about space weather, is just to recall uh, for some of you what is space weather, uh, what amateur, radio amateurs do, which relates to space weather, what is the AstroSight SkyWave program and SkyWave and its uh, radio amateur topside sounder and practically what we made thanks to AESA for Ionosfera. So about space weather, this is the standard accepted uh, definition of space weather. It's the condition of the sun and in the solar wind, magnetosphere, ionosphere and thermosphere that can influence the performances and reliability of space-borne and ground-based technological systems and can endanger human life or health. This is the standard scientific accepted uh, definition, but in fact, to make it simply, it is the interaction, the study of the interaction between the sun and the, uh, the earth and uh, especially about what are the effects of sp sunspot particle and electromagnetic radiation, obviously according to the 11th year cycle of the, of the CERN, to all what happens here around the Earth or down on the Earth. So space weather has negative and positive effects. The negative effects are satellites affected by radiations, 
astronauts when they are in orbit and especially in AVA they are subject to uh, radiation and bursts uh, that are uh, very energetic. Radiation uh, uh, effects on electronics, on crew and passenger, on commercial transatlantic uh, uh, air flights. Black, uh, blackouts, interruption in electric uh, uh, network uh, due, due to induced currents, interruptions in communication via ionosphere, degradation of the radio localization signal, see our uh, future Galileo, and some also say that it may have negative effects on cl climate degradation. But I, I prefer, prefer to talk about positive effects and one of the most uh, beautiful effects of space weather is the auroras that uh, when you see that once in your life um, you, you cannot forget, it's fantastic. And for what relates to our pleasure, uh, other pleasure ra as radio amateur, it allows the ionospheric radio, propaga in ra radio propagation of HF frequencies. So you should understand with this chart that uh, we are using a direct product of space weather for achieving our HFTX contact. We, the, the radio amateur that plays with this. So for those of you that do not know the, our specific terms, what is DX? In radio amateur language, DX means distant calling. And in fact, DX groups all communications that are not in direct line of sight of the radios. One of the most operated DX is intercontinental HF communication, and HF communication uses the refraction of the ionosphere layers to propagate the signal. In an, our recognized international uh, um, coordinating group, the YARU, uh, towards the ITU, there are several projects that are more or less coordinated, uh, which relates to HF DX. Uh, and of particular um, project uh, of interest, these two in uh, project, but the most important is the NCDXF uh, Foundation uh, International Beacon Project, where thanks to automatic beacons emitting regularly and uh, with varying, uh, sweeping some of their parameters, one, locate, one person located more or less everywhere in the, in, uh, in, uh, on, the, on the world, if he wants to assess the opening into one direction, into one frequency, in, uh, can try to listen to these uh, automatic beacons. And if he succeeds in, uh, in uh, listening to uh, ZL6B, then okay, he, will, he can surely go in this direction, or at least he can try to, because here, HF uh, DX is quite unreliable today. It's almost today a pleasure of radio amateurs to be there, to contact people, to communicate with them, but uh, it's not good uh, today for a reliable communication. So, there are several other projects uh, which relates to space weather and ionosphere within the radio amateurs <coughs> community, which I recall it's about 3, 000, uh, 3 million people around the world. Research is typically conducted individually in groups, are coordinated or not. One of these coordinated projects is our Skywave Ionosphere. So, Skywave Ionosphere is the name that we, uh, that we used before September 2007 uh, when we signed the Memorandum of Understanding between AMSAT Italia and um, the, the UAE to proceed with ASCOSA Skywave. So, I will here talk to you about the genesis of the Skywave part. The <clears throat> at that time, in October 2000, we, as Samsat Italia, we wanted to think about a, a, an, an interesting radio amateur satellite mission, but that was not only devoted to our pure pleasure of radio, uh, satellite radio amateurs, but that could also help other uh, amateurs, and especially we were aware of our friend the Dake cells that use the ionosphere as a direct product of space weather to contact their friends in the world. So we said, well, as uh, AMSAT Italia, we are specialized in the space part of, of, uh, of uh, this, uh, this system. What we could do is to try to make uh, a, a system, elaborate a system that could make our pleasure in doing something as space radio amateur. But that in turn can also help our friends on ground practicing HFTX. 
So the objective, the principal objective of SkyWave Ionosfera was and is to improve the practicability and reliability of radio communication via Ionosphere. The project is willing to develop a complete dedicated system based on a satellite, which is uh, typically called the space segment, and a ground network organized around a website, which is typically called the ground segment. The space segment was defined with the SkyWave pro subproject and the sa SkyWave satellite uh, was, uh, fine. It will ensure the in-situ collection of scientific data related to the ionosphere, but also, obviously, that will include and uh, support a uh, radioamateur uh, transponder dedicated to our classic um, way of transmitting. The ground segment itself of uh, SkyWave Ionosfera was defined in the Ionosfera subproject. Ionosfera is still supported by the European Space Agency as a pilot project for space weather application. And it's there, uh, Fabian, I don't know where you are, that uh, uh, you, you may enter uh, into the ESA uh, SWENET uh, inf data infrastructure. So in Ionosfera develops a network of radio amateurs and a website able to collect operational and scientific data on the ionosphere and offer free of charge services for the prediction and analysis of radio propagation via ionosphere. So, since the, the signature in September 2007, uh, we transformed the name into uh, AstroSat SkyWave. And here, today, it is still uh, an Italian project, but we want to open that because we, um, as you can imagine, uh, for uh, it, being an Italian alone, it's too much. Although we, we are now s uh, receiving the support of the Italian Space Agency, but we, we would prefer to do that with as much possible amateur involvement as possible. So it's a satellite propo uh, program proposed uh, by UAE and AMSAT Italia as a collaboration within the amateur communities and for usages of amateurs of astronomy and or radio. It is based, as I said before, on two LEO small satellites of about 60 kilo each. The first, AstroSat, would be dedicated to the optical, ast purely astronomical uh, part of the, of the project with a, visible, uh, with a telescope uh, working into the visible. A priori, it's oriented on the zenith, so uh, looking uh, to, to stars and, uh, and aggregates and not looking uh, uh, towards the, uh, the, the Earth. So it's purely for astronomy. And also, the second satellite would be equipped with a sounder, and in particular, our, our HF uh, radar uh, sounder, so our radio amateur topside sounder. Obviously, both will be equipped with radio amateur transponders still to be defined. Recently, I think this was in spring uh, this year, we went to uh, uh, an important uh, uh, even commercial fair on telecommunication in Italy, and we presented there our structural mock-up of uh, AstroSat. You see there in the center, obviously, the telescope uh, uh, being erected. The telescope is done by scientists of the uh, CNR, so Consiglio Nazionale di Ricerca. As I said to you, we are, it's a good relationship between high-level uh, scientists and amateurs. So about SkyWave. The SkyWave uh, satellite will ensure in-situ collection of scientific data related to the ionosphere, thanks to our RATS, and obviously implement uh, also a dedicated radiometer transponder. So since the beginning, we were in contact with the Union uh, uh, Radio Scientifique Internationale, the URC, and uh, in 2002, for the General Assembly, uh, we uh, prepared and presented a paper showing them uh, our ideas about what we could do at that time with SkyWave. And these were more or less all the possible radio frequency experiments that you could do to study the ionosphere. <coughs> at the end, we decided to implement a topside sounder as a commemorative uh, 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 mission for the Alouette uh, missions that uh, involved also UK uh, very uh, deeply in the year 60, 70, but uh, we think uh, it's very interesting. And some people said to us, do, I, do you feel confident that uh, you, you could do that? And we say, yes, typically yes, because AMSAT Italia itself has already done a lot of uh, nice things that are flying, 
but also we want to invite the other, other AMSATs to join and to do that together. So really the answer was yes, we are confident and we hope we will be as, uh, able to start a collaboration with the other AMSATs quite soon. Just a few words about the, the RATS. So RATS is a sweeping HF uh, radar, uh, so sending pulses at varying uh, uh, frequency. Uh, it is received and by calculating the time of flight you can retrieve the depth to which the, 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 the signal started to uh, not being reflected anymore by the higher level of the ionosphere. The historical specification, if you compare, uh, if you retrieve the, the, the specification of these uh, very famous uh, uh, topside sounders, boy, we collected here the range of the satellite, uh, of the, the possible specification that we could use uh, for implementing our RATs, but uh, they are still to be confirmed. We can do that with you, we can do, uh, we can do that with the, uh, the scientists from uh, Rutherford Upperton Laboratory, we have the, the nice contact them, and um, we will do that very soon. In any case, we are already starting to work, implementing various pieces. And here, although it's not directed to, uh, to rats, uh, our ex-president uh, India Whiskey 3 uh, uh, Quebec Bravo uh, November, uh, Paolo, uh, based on works from uh, two Finnish radio amateurs, is implementing uh, this uh, direct conversion uh, radio uh, receiver and transmitter system, of which this part could be used as the receiving part of our RATS, because it's a uh, digitally synthesized receiver or something like that. Sorry, I'm not uh, an expert of this part, but we are, we are already working. We are already working also on uh, HPAs that are uh, accommodating um, uh, the varying impedance uh, of the antennas because of the sweeping frequency. Well, we have some, some projects, uh, where we already started some projects on that. So now about ionosphere, because ionosphere is really the uh, most, uh, mostly completed element of the, of the system. Uh, just as an introduction, the uh, European Space Agency is interested in both the terrestrial and the space weather. You know Meteosats. Uh, you know uh, today uh, what they do with the uh, ESA SWENET infrastructure. So in particular, ESA started a series of activities dedicated to the space weather and invited interested groups to develop space weather services towards the interested communities. This was several years ago. But at that time already, we uh, were considering our interests and capabilities. AMSAT Italia and the Radio Amateur community took the opportunity to launch the Ionosphere app project. So the idea was, as you know, Ionosphere originally was uh, considered as being the central website, the central repository and interface with users of the full SkyWave missions, now AstroSat SkyWave but it was also a repository of tools allowing users, HFDXers, to assess uh, pr uh, propagation, to uh, start analyzing, playing a little bit with the things, so to start um, performing a little bit of science uh, based on uh, ionosphere. So we decided, we were asked to say, define space weather application for a targeted community. For us, the targeted community were the HFDXers, obviously. So the offered services that we said we would have provided uh, were operational data, so achieved radio communication uh, through the ionosphere. And this is one of our major graphs where you see over uh, more than one year and a an half period, we uh, compared the space weather activity thanks to the um, very specific uh, space weather uh, indexes and the HFDX activity of 16, o, uh, of 16 OM, totaling more than 120,000 QSO that they were achieved. So we were able to say, maybe we are not calibrated, so maybe we are not accurate in our instrumentation, but we have the number to make statistics. So even by choosing something like 16 radiometers, we were able to say, when one potentially is out on the weekend, 
the other potentially is behind this shack. Uh, when one is uh, in America uh, during night, uh, the other is uh, in daylight uh, in another part of the world. So we are quite confident in what we saw. And uh, we, thanks to that, we were able to derive an interesting things, which is part of our uh, prediction and understanding tool. So this is the uh, predictive tool for transmission. If you go to the website of Ionosfera, uh, you click on that current condition, it will first update uh, the near time, near real time, the, the values of the main indices used to, uh, of, uh, in space weather used to calculate our new uh, proposed uh, CAF index. And thanks to a traffic light code, it will uh, say to you, yes, a priori it's easy, you can go on. Today, uh, due to the condition, the CAF is in the range that tells you mm, it, will, it seems to be difficult. And uh, it can be extremely to the, say, to, the, to the red case where it says, better forget it today. Uh, operational data, this is um, what you saw. Thanks to what you saw, by rearranging a little bit the, the various axes, and uh, especially showing here with the increasing value of the CAF, this is the reported number of QSO per OM achieved over this uh, of all period. And you see distinctly that if you are here, then you can very, very easily work uh, HF. If you are in this part, then it starts to be a little bit difficult. And if you are over this uh, range, then it is still possible, but uh, it seems to be very hard. Other things that we developed and uh, that are avail available on our website is an uh, understanding tool so that you can play and uh, assess a little bit, uh, uh, start to make scientific calculation and observe things together. So you have a uh, first part of coordinate conversion where you can put uh, the, your maiden eight locator and it will immediately provide you all the, the information about uh, even the prefix, uh, the country and uh, the, central, uh, the central latitude and longitude of that country. You can use this, part, this information to calculate great circles in the second part. So there you can assess tra total travel uh, distance and heating from one station to the other. You can also, uh, in the last part, use the first two information to assess maximal usable frequency between two stations. So basically, to come to our uh, AstroSat uh, SkyWave program, it implements our concept of life. We say, in the definition of the radiomateur service, there is this famous self-training. This is implicitly to our definition. But we say that this self-training would be better if we can reconnect the link between radioamateurs and scientists. Because scientists are the, more, um, the, the person that are better aware of all the peculiarities and are better placed to uh, provide us with answers about our strange observation. And so we want to retype this link. We already, thank, uh, thanks to Ionosfera, and this is the, the link of the Ionosfera project, uh, we already succeeded in approaching and being appreciated by the European scientists working in, in Ionosphere. Uh, thanks to AstroSat, uh, we are already including in our uh, schematic, in our way to, to work, we are already including the, the astronomy, astrophysics uh, scientists Italy. But we want to proceed because we want to retight the link between these two communities. So we said since the beginning, radiomateurs are large in number and very much located all, the, all over the, uh, the world. This is a peculiarity that is very much updated uh, potentially by a scientist, although they know that they are, we are using non-calibrated data. But in fact, we can massively provide data to scientists, we could, we could then analyze these, thanks to also data from other sources, more accurate, to update their science models. And their science model will allow people, like what we did uh, with Ionosfera, to create user-dedicated predictive services, so helping us 
helping uh, HF data sets to improve the reliability and uh, predictability of their and their, link, uh, their, uh, their link. This is what we want to do. This is what we want to continue with AstroSat SkyWave. Uh, we hope that uh, we interested you so that in the future, between uh, European uh, AMSATs and also other uh, associations in the world, we could do that together, because by this we, uh, we are really working for the amateurs. If you need some contacts, you can talk to me after, uh, or if you, can, if you want, you can uh, write down my email address in the meantime that I answer to your question. Thank you for listening. <laughs>